It's time for America Outdoors Radio, the show that covers the outdoor scene across the U.S. of A. and the entire continent. Fishing, hunting, conservation, outdoor recreation, and great destinations, we cover it all every week. It's your country, your outdoors. Let's explore it together with your host, John Cruz. Welcome to the show. I'm starting off with a question for you. Have you been fishing this week? If so, did you take any pictures of what you caught if you did? And if that fish is over 8 inches long, you really ought to enter it into our $600 fishing giveaway that we're doing on Facebook. Just go to our America Outdoors Radio Facebook page, look for the post where people are posting their pictures of their catch, and post yours there too. Once you do, you are entered for a chance to win a $400 dollar ultralight float tube from wilderness light or fishing tackle packages from max lure or christensen's lakeshore tackle or tti blakemore worth 60 to 75 dollars each better still if you're looking for an excuse to do more fishing you can enter once a week and we will randomly draw winners on july 1st so go fishing go to our america outdoors radio facebook page post those pictures and enter for your chance to win This week on the show, Edward Chin, a full-time guide and accomplished bass tournament angler, will be joining us to talk about the different ways to rig and fish tube baits, those soft plastics that are a very, very effective offering for bass throughout the United States. After that, we're taking you to North America's deepest gorge, Hell's Canyon. It's located along the border of Idaho and Oregon, and this remote region can be explored by jet boat and also offers some great fish for both smallmouth bass and big sturgeon. Casey Jackson with Snake River Adventures will tell you more about this very special place that you can visit through their jet boat tours and guided fishing trips. Tournament bass fishing is underway again, albeit slowly, and one of the first big events happening is a Bassmaster Open Series event on the Arkansas River in June. Chris Bowes, the tournament director for this series, will join us to give you details about this event, the series at Itself and how you can watch the final day of competition at Bassmaster.com. Last but not least, we've been talking about firearms and self-defense on this show recently with Dr. Ignatius Piazza from the Front Sight Firearms Training Institute. But what about the safe and secure storage of your firearms? I hope you're not that guy or that gal who keeps your pistol in your unlocked nightstand. That is a recipe for disaster. But then again, if you you are like me and you keep your firearms in a big safe in the den, that might not be the best option either. That's why we're going to talk to Tom Kubinek today. He's the president and CEO of Secure It, and he'll join us towards the end of the show to share some really thought-provoking ideas about how to store your firearms and, more importantly, where to store your firearms in your home to keep them away from burglars and to make them accessible to you if you need them in a hurry to protect Protect yourself or your family. This is Can't Miss Radio. Before we talk firearms, though, let's talk fishing and how to catch more of them. Our first stop today on America Outdoors Radio is going to be in the Pacific Northwest. That's where we're checking in with Ed Chin. He is a full-time fishing guide, and he's also a very good bass tournament angler. He is the former TBF Bass Federation Oregon State Fishing Champion and a two-time national contender in that circuit as well. Ed, it's great to have you on the air. Hey, thanks for having me. Appreciate it. So, Ed, you put together a fantastic YouTube video about fishing tube baits. And, folks, I'd recommend after this interview that you check this out. It's just so well done. And I want to talk a little bit about tube baits for bass. Very effective lure for both largemouth and smallmouth. Why is it so effective? Well, the beauty of the tube bait that it mimics so many different forages that the bass like. It mimics a crawdad while it's creeping along the bottom. It also mimics bait fish. Uh, such as a sculpin or even shad that uh, are part of the bass's diet around in our parts and even all over the country. So it's a very versatile bait. Let's start off right away with colors. Now, this is a national show. We've got listeners in Mississippi. We've got listeners in New York. We have listeners in Missouri. And, of course, we've got listeners in the Pacific Northwest to include your hometown of Portland on AM 1640, The Patriot, and AM 860, The Answer. What are some basic colors you'd recommend that will work anywhere? 
Well, with any two, if I'm going to travel across the country, the number one go-to color would be a green pumpkin. I mean, you can fish green pumpkin anywhere in the country, but if I'm going to fish one color, it's going to be that green pumpkin. It mimics the crawdad. It, it mimics the goby. And so between the two or the sculpin, same you know bottom fish that the smallmouth are really keyed onto at certain lakes, but just the crawdad alone that tube can mimic the actions of that crawdad so well as it's just crawling on the bottom. Now, I like to stay with natural colors. I like some, uh, you know, watermelons. Ugly is a great smallmouth color. Even into uh, just the black and blues uh, where uh, you can use a black and blue. But, uh, again, if I had one tube color I was going to travel with the U.S. with and that's the only thing I was going to throw, I'd throw a green pumpkin tube having the, uh, you know, the opportunity either a large mouth or small mouth or even spot. On this video you put together, you described three different ways to rig two baits, and I'm guessing, depending on how you rig them, depends on how you fish them. Let's run through them. Now, one of them, you're using a specific jig head, and you're just basically treating the two bait like a jig. You just put it in, get the hook out, and you're jigging away, but it's not a ball jig head. It's a different type of jig head. What is that jig head? How do you fish it with a two bait? Well, the jig head that I like for those is a tapered tube head. And what the tapered does versus just a lead-inserted tube weight, to me, when I look at it, it has a a different action. It actually spirals down rather than just a straight down when you use a a tube insert weight. So between the two, you're going to change the action. So with the lighter weight, what happens is if you put that in the tube that's uh, maybe a a shad-colored tube, maybe a smoke with uh, pepper or a smoke with silver flake, and that, that tube with the tapering head, like an 8-ounce, 3 ounce head, if you cast that out, you'll see that thing spiral down like a dying bait fish, which will trigger a strike out there. Now, a different way of using that tube also is just using a standard tube weight insert, which is very blocky-like, and that'll give you your straight-down action to where you need to get down to the bottom and crawl it immediately. But in certain instances... That tube, that tapered tube head works really well. You know, you can find them at uh, your Cabela's or Bass Pro Shops. You know, there's other, a lot of other manufacturers out there that have it. I think Kalen's also makes a tube head in which will fit in there. But that tapered tube head, when you look at it, it, it actually creates that spiraling action on the tube rather than having that straight fall down motion. Now, using a ball head jig is another, another a very effective way, another effective weight that works. That gives it, again, just a straight down, it's almost straight down, but it seems to kick out a little bit. So if it looks at it, it almost kind of seems like an airplane kind of gliding down on the bottom, and then you can work it. But the key to the tube bait is that you have to have bottom contact for 90% of the presentations. Now, that isn't everything. That's why I say it's 90%. But the most of the, what creatures or bait that you're trying to mimic, it is going to be focused on the bottom, and you want to be down there grinding that tube on the bottom, triggering that strike. And there's going to be different retrieves also. Well, we kind of touched on that, was that you may want to drag it where you might drag it six inches and stop. If you look at behavior of, of creatures, if you're on the creek side one day and you happen to see a crawdad moving around, that crawdad's pretty cautious. He's not walking around nilly-willy just, you know, aimlessly on the walk, moving as fast as he can. He's actually stopping, taking a look, pausing, maybe crawling over an area, stopping, maybe he'll hunker down in the little crevice of the rock, and he may stop there for a little bit. So that means, you know, hey, pause that bait. Those are just, you know, the ant- the creatures out there, if we study nature, are going to tell us so much about the environment that we're fishing, and if we can key onto those, that will increase our success rate in catching these fish. We've got about 30 seconds for you to talk about how to rig a weedless tube bait and how to fish that. The weedless tube bait, really simple, Texas rig style with a one-aught EGW uh, hook, a wide gap hook. Thread a quarter inch of the head through the hook. Take that hook out through the bottom. Measure the hook point where it's going to enter the tube in again. I recommend using a one-aught or two-aught hook. On a quarter ounce or up to, let's say, uh, three eighths ounce of bullet head weight on that Texas rig, painted, unpainted, doesn't matter. But again, the key is fish that bait to the bottom. All right. This is some great advice for all of you bass anglers out there. And if any of you find yourself in the Pacific Northwest or currently live in the Pacific Northwest and want to up your game, you can go fishing with Ed. He will take you out on a guided bass fishing trip, teach you a few tricks like he's teaching you right now. He also does all sorts of other guiding, too, for salmon, for sturgeon, for all sorts of different species. The website to go to is aaaexcursions.com. That 
That's AAA, spelled A-A-A, excursions.com. Check it out, book a trip with Ed, and learn a whole lot more about fishing. Ed, thanks for sharing this great advice with us today on America Outdoors Radio. Hey, thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Have a great day, guys. Tight lines, everybody. In today's world, violent crime can victimize anyone at any time. When it's your time, will you be able to protect yourself and your loved ones? For your personal protection, I recommend training at Front Sight, the world's premier firearms training facility located near Las Vegas, Nevada. And due to our relationship with Front Sight's founder and director, Dr. Ignatius Piazza, I've arranged for you and your family to train there too, free of charge. Yes, it's true. In your internet browser, enter frontsight.com forward slash outdoors to secure a $2,000 four-day defensive handgun course absolutely free of charge with no hidden surprises or catches. Enter F-R-O-N-T-S-I-G-H-T dot com forward slash outdoors. After your first course at Front Sight, you'll leave with skills that surpass 99% of the gun-owning population guaranteed. Nobody does it better than Front Sight, but you must act before these free courses are all taken. Secure your free four-day course at frontsight.com forward slash outdoors. See you at Front Sight. Looking to reel in the marketing opportunity of a lifetime? Then set the hook because we've got it right here. America Outdoors Radio has sponsorships available, and we offer an affordable platform to reach thousands of listeners interested in fishing, hunting, and the outdoors. Find out more by contacting host John Cruz through his website at AmericanOutdoorsRadio.com. That's AmericanOutdoorsRadio.com. But hurry, if you wait too long, this big opportunity might just get away. That's AmericanOutdoorsRadio.com. You're back in with America Outdoors Radio. I'm John Cruz, and we are taking you to Hell's Canyon. It's North America's deepest gorge. That's right. You thought the Grand Canyon was, but it isn't. It's Hell's Canyon, located along the combined border of Oregon and Idaho. And we are talking to a person who wants to take you on some tours there and to go fishing there, too. Her name is Casey Jackson. She's with Snake River Adventures, located in Lewiston, Idaho. Casey? See, it's great to have you on the air. Hey, thank you so much. So let's tell our listeners a little bit about this beautiful and really interesting place called Hell's Canyon uh, that's located south of Lewiston and why folks should go to visit North America's deepest gorge. Well, our valley here, the Lewis Clark Valley, is kind of a rare piece of property. Uh, you can be in the mountains and on the river in just minutes. You got the Blues Mountains and you got Hell's Canyon right at your fingertips. So when everybody comes down here for visitor information or wanting to come and see the canyon, they usually come and see us. We are the largest company on Snake River. Actually, we're the largest boat company between the Snake River through the Columbia River until you hit out to the ocean. So uh, we've definitely got the knowledge, and we would love to have everybody come see us. So, folks, if you haven't been to Hell's Canyon before, now in particular is a great time to go. Number one, it's very remote and it's very scenic. You're going to be going up the Snake River, navigating rapids along the way. you got these towering cliffs above you in some areas. Other areas, not so much. Wildlife is really abundant. We're talking not just deer, but we're talking bighorn sheep are commonly seen. Not unusual to see a bear, maybe on rare occasion, even a cougar. You can see all sorts of stuff on tours or while fishing in this area, and the fishing is fantastic. We'll get to that in a minute. There's also a ton of history that you learn about, too. And and your jet boat tour operators, they know everything. They've got this speech well-polished so that listeners really come out very educated about everything that's going on here, don't they? It amazes me how much they know and how they retain it all. So there's about six or seven stops that they'll, you might not get off at each stop, but there's about six different places on the river that really have a significant amount of history. Uh, to name a few is um, Doug Bar. That's where 
the Nez Perce Indians, um, Chief Joseph himself, swam his whole entire family and his whole group of people through the river where they, you know, they actually lost some of their sheep, their goats, um, their horses, and some lives. But it, there's some really neat history with the Chinese massacre that's up the river. And there's an old ranch there at Kirkwood. And then, of course, if you make it all the way to Hills Canyon Dam, that's quite the sight to see. Of course, I've been up there quite a few times. But there's a whole different set of wildlife. Once you get further into the canyon, you'll see different, you know, birds of prey. And you'll even see some dull sheep um, as you get closer to that upper part of Idaho. When we leave from Lewiston, we're actually um, bordering Washington. And it's just the river that divides us. So uh, you actually, at one point in the tour, you will be in three states at one time. So it's pretty cool. Yes, it is. Let's talk about the jet boat tours you have. Uh, The boats, folks, they're really comfortable, and there are heads on board, but you have half-day and full-day tours, don't you? We do, and we do the occasional dam tour as well. It's not our top seller. We do have to have about 10 or 12 people on each day to leave the dock. So our biggest seller actually is the half-day tour, and that runs from 10 to 4 o'clock. So the half-day tour, how far up the canyon do you go for that one? You're going to go to that really awesome destination of the Nest Purse Crossing there at Doug Bar. There is a little spot that we can pull in, and you can actually walk that piece of property where the Indians used to really take their time and stay and fish and and live right there in the canyon. So it's, it's a pretty neat place. There's a lot of artifacts, you know, just on that site as well. And for the full day tour, are you heading up to Kirkwood Ranch? We do. We actually go past Kirkwood Ranch. We go through Rush Creek going to be one of those first big class three rapids that you're going to come to and then there's granite creek that's just up around the corner we usually turn around right after rush creek a lot of the other companies turn around at kirkwood but we got to have a little bit of that exciting fresh water <laughs> on that full day tour so we have a little bit of fun in the rapids and we turn around just up past that so casey on the full day tour i know lunch is involved and you stop off at a pretty special place for lunch to let people stretch their legs don't you On the half-day tour, on both tours, actually, we'll stop at our Garden Creek Ranch location. It's actually a nature conservancy piece of property, so it's really kind of put together for the wildlife. There's turkeys everywhere. There's deer that will eat out of your hands, and there's over 100 trees in the orchard. So it's a pretty unique place to stop and stretch your legs and sit in the chairs underneath the trees or walk along the beach while you're taking some time for yourself and your family. On the full day tour, we actually eat upriver at Kirkwood Ranch, and it is another ranch. It's a pretty neat location also. Not only that, but the Kirkwood Historical Ranch is actually on the National Historic Register, and you will find folks there from the Forest Service. Yep, it absolutely is. So um, every tour that we have that leaves Lewiston, Idaho, once it passes Cash Creek up the river, uh, we have to pay a fee to the U.S. Forest Service. So it's 3%. So every single person that comes up river is actually really kind of supporting the history and these old ranches that the Forest Service, you know, take care of and fire season. So it's actually a really neat thing. Fantastic. Well, we have got to talk about the fishing because the Snake River in Hell's Canyon offers some absolutely fantastic fishing for both smallmouth bass and some really, really big sturgeon. Yeah, the sturgeon are, you know, they're almost like dinosaurs. They're really rare. You know, in most rivers, you can't even fish for them. Here, you can't keep them. But, man, you can fish for them, and and some of them will give you a fight for a couple hours, especially those big eight-footers. Right now is a prime time. We're just getting through our big runoff season, so the water's a little high. But 1st of June, when the water just gets a little bit clear, uh, the sturgeon really start to bite. In fact, I did see with Memorial Weekend, everybody's posting pictures on Facebook, and I did see some people caught some really nice sturgeons this weekend. So, And I know the ba- bass are biting hard, so this is a good time to come fishing and spend some time with quality family. And I'll tell you what, folks, if you like smallmouth bass fishing, it doesn't get much easier than it does on the Snake River in Hell's Canyon. The bass are abundant. A lot of them are good size, and they are definitely on the bite from spring through the summer. Ton of fun to catch those. Makes for a great family trip. I'm sure that your company is following all the COVID precautions when it comes to both the jet boat tours and the fishing tours. So we're definitely trying to do precautions here at our office as well in our gift shop before you head down to the boats. You know, the boats are going to have that awesome fresh air. 
we have so much space in our boats that we can actually skip seats if we need to, if certain people haven't been quarantined together. So we're going to be doing our part and making sure we're asking the customers, you know, have they been sick in a couple of days? And how have you been taking care of yourself as well? Because we want to protect, you know, not just ourselves, but everyone that does get to come and, and take the tours with us. America is reopening again, folks. And one of the things that you can do as we reopen is rediscover America. And one of the places you have to discover, if you haven't already, is Hell's Canyon. Absolutely. If you want to go on a fishing trip or a jet boat trip into Hell's Canyon, you can book one with Snake River Adventures. The website to go to, snakeriveradventures.com. That's snakeriveradventures.com. Head out to Hell's Canyon enjoy america and all it has to offer casey thanks so much for sharing this with us today on america outdoors radio hey thank you so much Immerse yourself in a complete Alaska wilderness experience through Sportsman's Cove Lodge. Up to six of you will spend a week in a beautiful waterfront log home in a secluded cove. Every day is a new adventure. Go on a guided fishing trip or haul in a bounty of shrimp and crab. Visit a Native American village where totem poles are carved. Go on a whale or bear watching trip and return back to your very own place at the end of the day. Find out more about the Alaska Wilderness Experience at alaskasbestlodge.com. That's alaskasbestlodge.com. The Dalton in Oregon is your base camp for fishing fun. Reel in big salmon, tangle with steelhead, bass, and walleye, or wrestle a monster sturgeon to the boat. After the day is done, you'll find a variety of lodging options around town. Need to resupply? We've got you covered with sporting goods stores plus great dining, breweries, wineries, and can't-miss attractions like the Gorge Discovery Center. Plan your fishing getaway today at explorethedals.com. That's explorethedals.com. Going after kokanee? Then stock up with spinners, squids, and dodgers from Christensen's Lake Shore Tackle. They're your best bet for getting those landlocked salmon to bite. Buy Lake Shore Tackle products today in major sporting goods stores or online at lakeshoretackle.com. I fish lots of lakes, I fish them all year round. No, oh, I fish lots of lakes, everywhere I'm bound. Can't say which lake's the best until I try all the rest going fishing. Next on America Outdoors Radio, I've got some great news. Tournament bass fishing is coming back, and you might say Bassmaster is leading the way. Their first event's going to be with the Bassmaster Open Series. There's going to be a tournament June 18th on the Arkansas River. With us here to tell you more about it is the tournament director, Chris Bowes. Chris, great to have you on the air. Hey, John. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. And, uh, yeah, we're excited to get back to business, so to speak, and competition. And we actually do have a Bassmaster Week Series event the week before on uh, Lake Fall in, in uh, Ufala, Alabama. So that will actually lead us back into competition after a, quite a lengthy uh, time off. We stopped right after the Bassmaster Classic, which was a terrific event this uh, past March. And kind of been on hold, but it looks like things are going to get back on track here in, in the next well, oh gosh, I guess about two weeks or so. Well, I can't wait because I think all of us are just starving to watch and participate in these sports again. Why don't you tell our, our listeners a little bit about the series that you're the director for, the Bassmaster Opens series. Whenever I hear open, I think of wide participation, but I'm guessing the skill level here is pretty high, too. Yeah, I mean, it is true to the word open. Uh, it's an open competition for all bass members. That's really the, the only criteria to fish in. However, demand is so high, they tend to fill up fairly quickly. Our, our Eastern Division, which we actually kicked off the year in, in mid-January down in Kissimmee, Florida, on the Kissimmee Chain of Lakes, with actually a uh, full field uh, of 225 pros and 225 co-anglers. So 450 competitors. So, yes, wow. it's, a, it's a large, large field. Uh, unfortunately, some of the, the anglers that uh, registered were unable to get into the event because we essentially sold out, which is a good problem to have, I guess. It is a good problem to have, but, man, that's a lot of boats on the water. Fortunately, the Arkansas River is a pretty big river. What part of the Arkansas are anglers going to be fishing, and what are some of the opportunities that anglers have in terms of catching and finding big bass? 
Well, they were actually fishing out of Muskogee, Oklahoma. So even though it's Arkansas River, we're fishing basically the portion in uh, Oklahoma. Muskogee, for those that don't know, is just uh, a little bit south of of, uh, Tulsa. The anglers typically, we don't really have restrictions on how far they travel, but there's a lock about 25 miles to the south and a lock about 11 miles uh, to the north. Certainly some anglers, a lot of anglers will lock through those locks, but we haven't, I've done many events over the years on the Arkansas River out of Muskogee. We haven't had many folks double lock. There's just just not enough time, and, and, and usually there's, you know, decent enough fishing in those three pools during competition day. Is this primarily a smallmouth show, a largemouth show, or, or spotted bass? It's going to be a predominantly, if not all, largemouth bass. And for those that don't know, the Arkansas River itself uh you know it's fairly narrow but there's a lot of backwaters that will be big players i would imagine okay so let's talk about what the winners are after here in terms of prize money what does the first place winner get and i'm guessing you also want to score high because you can qualify for some other tournaments and some other honors yeah yeah no we have over over a quarter million dollars total purse based on 150 boats Wow. Um, so obviously, we fish 225 at Kissimmee for Arkansas River. Right now, we're sitting at about 200. So we take the, uh, the first place, which based on 150, $35,000, we basically will we'll just increase every payout position by you know the same percentage that we fish over 150 in this case. So, so that $35,000 first place prize is probably when all is said and done going to be closer to to 40 uh 42 something like that so uh that's really exciting uh, we pay the top 40 anglers in both the pro and co-angler division this is a pro amateur co-angler format the anglers are randomly paired each day each competition day full field fishes on day one and two which is typically thursday and friday which it will be at the uh the arkansas river our kickoff of competition uh, will be june 18th and then the 19th again all the full field will, will fish, but then on the 20th, we'll cut down to our top 12. And to your other point, uh, yeah, the, in addition to that over a quarter million dollars in prize money, there's certainly uh, some other things the anglers are trying to, to compete for, and, and, and obviously a huge carrot. I mentioned the, the Bassmaster Classic earlier. If the, if the winner in the pro division uh, has fished all four events in the series, they qualify for the 2021 Bassmaster Classic, which... Uh, I know the fans are, are anxious to hear where that's going to be, and I think that announcement is coming very, very soon. So Excellent. Be watching out for that. But, uh, yeah, there also uh, there's some points. Uh, we have a 200-point system, so our winner gets 200 points, second 199, and, and so on and so forth. They'll accumulate those points through a series of events, and a top four in both the Central and Eastern Division will qualify for the 2021 Bassmaster Elite Series, which is – you know, obviously the highest level of competitive bass fishing. New this year, we're really excited that we have introduced a, another opportunity for the anglers to qualify for the Elite Series, um, which has been very received as our top four in overall points. So if anglers, and we have about almost 50 that are doing this, if a pro angler is fishing both divisions, they'll actually accumulate points for both division and our top four and those overall points will also qualify for the 2021 Bassmaster Elite Series. So, you know, doing the math, there's there's actually 12 bursts available to the open anglers in, in 2020 for the Elite Series in 2021. And wow. also, you know, I'm really excited, Falcon Rods has introduced the Angler of the Year program on the, both the pro and co-angler side. The top finisher in that those overall points will be deemed the BassPro.com Bassmaster Open Angler of the Year. Thank you, Falcon Rods, again for providing the support with that. They'll get a $10,000 bonus to the pro, and our co-angler uh, will get entry fees to fish as a pro the following season, which is a value of $7,200. So that's really exciting carrot as well. Well, a lot of carrots there, a lot of prize money, a lot to compete for. Last question. I think all of us are starving for sports again. How can fans watch this? Is there going to be some some live TV or a live stream that we can watch this on or at least follow along somehow on an app? 
Yeah, certainly. We we're we're super excited, John, because we just uh, rolled out. We've been talking about it for some time, really, since the Bassmaster Classic. Uh, we've been talking about some new opportunities for, for coverage uh, of the BassPro.com Bassmaster Open Series, and then everything kind of went, you know, stagnant for a while. We right. didn't know if we were still going to have the support that we had, and, and we do, thanks to all of our, really, their partners in all of this. Uh, they've stepped up, and, and we're going to have live uh, coverage, on-the-water coverage, on the final competition day of each of the remaining seven uh, BassPro.com Bassmaster Open competitions. So the fans will be able to log on to Bassmaster.com uh, and watch the actual competition as it unfolds on that final day. And we do cut to our top 12. Uh, I mentioned the full field fish in the first two days. That final day is the top 12. So our goal is to have five cameras on the water right now. And, you know, we're not committing to any particular anglers, probably just see how the day unfolds. And we'll be able to jump around from some if, if, if it's uh, convenient and hopefully get a little bit of coverage for, for everyone. In addition, for those that don't maybe get the, the live coverage, uh, and this is all competition. We will have the bass track that fans are probably familiar with from the Bassmaster Elite Series. Uh, so if the anglers cooperate, because we don't have marshals on the boats uh, like they do at the Elite Series, we're, we're going to put on the anglers to, to give us updates. And, you know, we haven't requested them to update us with every fish like like the marshals do with the Bassmaster Elite Series. But sure. rather just a couple times a day, just put in like kind of a total number of fish and total weight that they feel like they have at that time. And it will update on a leaderboard that fans can follow all day on Bass.com. All right, exciting stuff, folks. Again, this is the Bassmaster Open Series, and this one is taking place June 18th through the 20th on the Arkansas River in Oklahoma. If you want to follow along, go to Bassmaster.com, and again, on June 20th, you can watch the final day of competition. This looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. Chris, thanks for sharing this with us today on America Outdoors Radio. Awesome, John. Thanks for having me on, and uh, appreciate you and all the bass fans. Maple Lake, French Lake, Grand Lake, Cedar Lake, Pleasant Lake, Clear Lake, Bass Lake, Collar Lake, Goose Lake, Gull Lake, Round Lake, Pearl Lake, Rice Lake, Sugar Lake, Mud Lake, Long Lake, Ant Lake, Swan Lake, Lake of the Woods, oh, I fish everywhere. Kokanee indeed. That's what my family says every time they catch a delicious kokanee salmon. And we're reeling them in today. We're trolling spinners, crop dusters, or my personal favorite mini squids behind dodgers made by Christensen's Lakeshore Tackle. Tested at Flaming Gorge Reservoir, Lakeshore Tackle will catch kokanee wherever you're fishing. Look for Lakeshore Tackle at Sportsman's Warehouse, Cabela's, and Shields, or online at lakeshoretackle.com. Kokanee indeed at lakeshoretackle.com. Why book at Sportsman's Cove Lodge? Why is Alaska like no other place on earth? It hasn't changed in thousands of years. From the way you get here on a float plane to the way you go out with the guides and the boats, it's just a professional experience. And I said, this is as good as it gets. I said, if you can't catch fish here, you can't catch fish anywhere. Your experience with us will leave you speechless. Book now at alaskasbestlodge.com. Hunting and fishing are exercises in hope. Before you head into the woods, you hope to tag out on a deer you'll have to field dress. Before you make that first cast, you hope for a big fish to clean and fillet. When your hopes are realized, you'll need a sharp knife. Whether you sharpen that blade on a power sharpener in the shop or a manual sharpener in the field, WorkSharp has the tool for you. Look for WorkSharp products in sporting and stores near you or online at WorkSharpTools.com. In today's world, violent crime can victimize anyone at any time. When it's your time, will you be able to protect yourself and your loved ones? For your personal protection, I recommend training at Front Sight, the world's premier firearms training facility located near Las Vegas, Nevada. And due to our relationship with Front Sight's founder and director, Dr. Ignatius Piazza, I've arranged for you and your family to train there too, free of charge. Yes, it's true. In your internet browser, enter frontsight.com forward slash outdoors to secure a $2,000 four-day defensive handgun course absolutely free of charge with no hidden surprises or catches. Enter F-R-O-N-T-S-I-G-H-T dot com forward slash outdoors. After your first course at Front Sight, you'll leave with skills that surpass 99% of the gun-owning population guaranteed. 
Nobody does it better than Front Sight, but you must act before these free courses are all taken. Secure your free four-day course at frontsight.com forward slash outdoors. See you at Front Sight. Backcountry Hunters and Anglers is the voice for your public lands, waters, and wildlife. From the Canadian Yukon to the Florida Everglades, we're stepping up to conserve North America's public lands, defend our hunting and fishing traditions, and expand public access to the outdoors. Our outdoor heritage depends on sportsmen and women like you speaking up for the natural resources that sustain our way of life. Find out how you can get involved at backcountryhunters.org and become a BHA member today. You're back in with America Outdoors Radio, and this portion of the show is brought to you every week by WorkSharp. They are the ones that make those fabulous knife and tool sharpeners out of Ashland, Oregon, and you can buy them all over America in quality hardware and sporting goods stores. You can also buy them online at WorkSharpTools.com, and there's a reason you might want to shop there, because we can give you one heck of a deal if we do. Just go to WorkSharpTools.com, make your selection of whatever knife and tool sharpeners you want, whether they are manual sharpeners or electric sharpeners, and when you check out Type in radio as a coupon code. When you do, you will get 30% off your entire order plus free shipping. The coupon code again is radio and the website is worksharptools.com. Our final guest today on America Outdoors Radio is Tom Kubinek. He is the president and CEO of Securit Tactical. And you really need to check out a website he's got. It's securitgunstorage.com because he has got some safes for you to help you secure those firearms that you have. Now, I hope that if you're listening today, you're not one of those people that has a handgun sitting in the dresser drawer or the nightstand drawer next to your bed, or that you have unsecure firearms around the house. There's so many reasons this is a bad, bad idea, primarily because kids can get a hold of them, accidents can happen, they can easily be stolen. Lots of reasons you need to secure your firearms. Tom, it's great to have you on the show to talk about firearm security. Well, thank you very much. I'm excited. So, let's start off with, you know, the safes that most of us have for our firearms, those big thousand plus pound gun safes. I've got one in my garage. I've got another one in my basement. And this isn't necessarily a great idea for a host of reasons. Why don't you explain why? Well, it's a great grandfather's gun safe. Remember, the current design goes back to the 70s, early 1970s, and they're designed to meet a 1970s threat level. The RSC standard, RSC is the UL rating, is security against a hammer of under 5 pounds, a pry bar of less than 18 inches, and a small drill. When you come into modern times, you get a DeWalt 24-volt cordless circular saw with a modern carbide blade, I took a large American-made safe, a 40-gun safe, a popular brand, and we have a video on our website. I cut it completely in half in under two minutes. Oh my then gosh. I cut a 12-inch a by 12-inch hole in the side of it in 18 seconds. Modern tools cut these things to pieces very quickly. So don't deal with the weight. Our position is go smaller, go modular, locate guns where thieves don't look. It's more, you know, our background is military. And we bring more of a military approach to how do you efficiently and effectively store firearms so they're secure, yet available to you quickly in the event of a crisis. Well, and and that's what really caught my eye on your website, uh, was this concept of decentralized storage of your firearms, but secure storage of your firearms at the same time with the concept, just like you said, of having them available when you need them for personal security. Go ahead and explain this concept a little bit more and how it works. Well, decentralized storage, the idea is don't put all your eggs in one basket. If you got a big safe in the center of a, like a den next to a fireplace, the way the ads in some of the safe companies would show are next to a pool table, you're advertising, all my valuables are here. Right. Cornerstone of security is secrecy. Well, we'd take a look. At, you know, we provide a small, modular set of safes, and you locate them throughout your home. And as it works out, the most secure locations in your home to store firearms to prevent loss are also the best places 
in the event of a crisis. I'll run through real quick. A thief breaks into a house. He's going master bedroom, master bath, drugs, valuables, home office, den. Typically, they're out at that point. If they believe there's a safe, they may check a basement. They're out in less than nine minutes. When we store firearms, one firearm in a master bedroom, if your husband and wife both have a gun, two in a secure, fast access safe, either side of the bed. Next location is kitchen, a small, secure safe located in a pantry or kitchen cabinet. You spend a lot of time there. You can arm yourself in a crisis. You can also typically leave the home. There's an exit point from the kitchen. Thieves don't go into kitchens. Next, front hall closet next to your door. I've got a cabinet. I've got six rifles there. It's part of my storage plan. But also, thieves never look in these closets. It's just coats. Yet, if I'm at the front door and there's somebody I don't know and they decide they want to start kicking that door in, I'm armed within three seconds. I would then go to at a den, handgun, small, hidden gun safe in a cabinet, and then guest bedroom in a home. If you've got a large collection, the bulk of my collection, guest bedroom in a closet. A thief going through the house opens the door. He sees a made bed, a nightstand with nothing on it but a lamp. There's nothing else in the room. He's like, boom, guest room. He's not going to go in there. He doesn't have time. He's not going to take the time. In that closet, I've got several cabinets with firearms. Additionally, at night, if there's a break-in in my house and I give the code word, my kids all go to that bedroom. It's at the end of a hallway in the upstairs of our house. We're there. We can arm ourselves. And we've got a hallway, which is a shooting lane. There's no way that someone's going to get to us down that hallway. This is absolutely brilliant and just so so full of common sense at the same time but then again as everyone knows that's why common sense is so uncommon absolutely love this concept of decentralized storage of firearms and especially where you're storing firearms to keep them out of the way of thieves and in your hands if needed for personal security you make a whole host of ultralight safes and fast box gun safes as well for decentralized storage where can folks buy them. We are direct to consumer. We looked at going through retail stores, but the big stores put 30 to 40 percent margin on top of whatever you sell to them for. We're trying to make this as efficient as possible. Our goal is that all guns in America are locked. Um, You can go right to our website, securitgunstorage.com. If you just Google secure it, we are front and center. Again, that's SecureItGunStorage.com, SecureItGunStorage.com. Check out the product line and consider storing your firearms in a different and better and secure way. Tom, thanks so much for sharing this with us today on America Outdoors Radio. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. I'll tell you what, that was some great advice from Tom Kubinek. And if you want more information about being a responsible firearms owner, then you really should check out frontsite.com forward slash outdoors because as we've been telling you, Frontsite is offering a four-day defensive handgun course near Las Vegas, Nevada worth $2,000 absolutely free of charge. No matter what your experience level, this four-day course will take you to the next level and you'll walk away as a competent and confident firearms owner that can handle yourself in any situation. And thanks to Tom Kubinick at Secure at Gun Storage, you also know how to store your guns to also help you out in any situation and prevent theft of those same firearms too. Before we go, we want to remind you about that fishing giveaway we're doing. We've gotten some really good pictures on both of our radio show Facebook pages at Northwestern Outdoors Radio and America Outdoors Radio, and we hope you'll participate too. All you have to do is go fishing, take a picture of any fish you catch over eight inches long, and Post it on our Facebook page on the thread where we're doing this contest. If you want to let us know where you caught it, that'd be great too. Once you post that, you are entered for a chance to win a $400 float tube from Wilderness Light or lure and tackle packages from three different companies worth $60 to $75 each, courtesy of Christensen's Lakeshore Tackle, Max Lure, and TTI Blakemore. Better still, you can enter... 
Better still, you can enter once a week until this contest ends on June 30th, and we will randomly draw winners on July 1st. It's our $600 fishing giveaway. Take part in it. It's a great excuse to go fishing. As for me, I'm going fishing too this week. I'm heading to the Dalles, Oregon. The Dalles Area Chamber is a sponsor of our show, and I'm going to make this town a base camp for my buddy and I who are fishing for northern pike minnow on the Columbia River with an eye towards making some money through the Northern Pike Minnow Sport Reward Fishery Program. We're also going to cast for American Shad below Bonneville Dam. There was a record run of shad last year up the Columbia River bordering Oregon and Washington, and we may break that record again this year. If you like the idea of catching a couple of dozen sporty fish that fight really well, and they all weigh one and a half to four pounds each, and Maybe you're looking for some good bait for sturgeon or crab? Then shad fishing, this is for you. Great opportunity for the kids as well to get into some fun fighting fish. Oh, and if we get a little time, we might even do a little bass and walleye fishing too. Bottom line is, I can't wait for the coming week. It's going to be fun. I hope you get outside for some fishing or other fun too in the days ahead. I also hope that you remain healthy in this time of the COVID-19 pandemic where there are other health situations too. So please take care of yourself. One way you can do that is by recreating outside, whether it's going for a walk, going fishing, going boating, paddling, hiking, spend some time outdoors. Enjoy the healing power of Mother Nature. After all, it is your country and your outdoors, so get out there and enjoy it. (laughs) 